Coronamids are the number one food source for trout in productive lakes, and pontoon boats like this fish cat are a perfect platform to fish them from. Have you tried this method and not had the success you thought you'd like? Let me show you a few tricks that I think can help. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to another On The Water Outcast video tip. On today's tip, I'm going to show you how to effectively fish coronamids from a pontoon boat. So if you're not familiar with coronamids, let me give you a brief review of their life cycle. Coronamids have a complete life cycle, egg, larva, pupa and adult. The larval stage, or the, what's commonly referred to as blood worms, live in or near the bottom. They feed on rotting vegetation or detritus. The larva seals itself off after it matures and transforms into the pupal stage. The pupa suspend a period of time from hours to days, suspending above the bottom, and then they elevate their way to the surface where they hatch into the winged adult that looks like a mosquito. The, mos the adults mate, lay eggs, and the cycle is complete again. When you're fishing coronamids in lakes, by far the most productive stages to concentrate on are the larval stages, fishing the flies just above the bottom, and the pupal stages from the bottom all the way up to the surface. And that's what we're going to focus on today. There are a number of different methods you can use to successfully catch fish on coronamid pupa and larva in lakes. Strike indicator presentations are arguably the most popular, but you can also use floating lines with long leaders, a technique we affectionately call the naked technique because of the lack of indicator on the leader. You can fish slow sinking lines like clear intermediates and hovers when the fish are spread out or when it's really windy and using long leader and indicator techniques is problematic. And then you can fish vertically in deep water using fast sinking type six or seven lines, a technique we affectionately call dangling. Arguably the most important aspect of this tip is boat control. What do I mean by boat control? It means simply that you have total control of your boat so it's doing what you want it to do, allowing you to focus on whatever presentation technique you're using. This fish cat streamer comes with a factory anchor system. This is where I put my heaviest anchor to lock myself in place. I always want to be fishing downwind, that means the wind at my back. And now to stop annoying sway that gets in the way when your boat's swaying left and right, you're not in control of your presentation, I've installed a second anchor cleat on my left foot peg because I'm right-handed. I deploy the five pound pyramid attached to the rope on this anchor system, lower it down, my boat's in control. If you want to see how to install this anchor cleat on your pontoon boat, check out our YouTube channel for installing a second anchor. So I'm anchored and ready to go. I'm going to start with an indicator system. So when you're using floating lines, whether with an indicator like this or that long leader naked technique, you can use the wind to help present your fly, much like swinging a wet fly on a river and stream. So I'm anchored, wind at the back, I'm going to quarter a cast either to my left or my right. I generally do it to the left because I'm right-handed and I am going to use a reach cast or a series of men's to allow that line to swing straight down as straight as I can. I don't want a big C to form because that's difficult to set the hook around a curve. It can speed up your presentation and can actually move the fly up out of the zone you're trying to target. So if I'm using an indicator, I call it moving the strike zone. So let's say there's 10 feet of visibility around my fly. If I pitched it straight down below me, I've got to hope that a fish comes within 10 feet of my fly to see it and eat it. But if I could take that zone and move it 30 feet downwind and then retrieve it back 30 feet, that's 60 times 10 is 600 circular feet, if that's the right unit of measure, that my fly will be exposed to fish. I should catch more fish using coronamids and enjoy more success. When I'm using the naked technique, because I also timed the fly down because I don't have an indicator to suspend it, I'm just going to wind drift it. So much like swinging that wet fly again, I'm just going to let it swing down until I reach my countdown where I'm going to start my retrieve and then I bring it back. So both of these methods, moving the strike zone and wind drifting, are using the wind induced current to move my fly and present it to more fish. Another constant with coronamid fishing, 
whether you're fishing floating lines, slow sinking lines, or fast sinking lines, is the pace of the presentation. Remember, these bugs don't move fast. Bloodworm, chronomid larva writhe and wriggle a little bit. Chronomid pupa slowly elevate to the surface. So when I'm fishing chronomids, I'm using three primary presentation techniques. First of all, is just chuck it out there and just let it sit. This is when water temperatures are cool, perhaps environmental conditions have put fish off the bite, that's when you'd use this technique. If you're not catching fish using that technique, then you can start using retrieves. So the first one is a backbone still water retrieve and that's the hand twist. And it's just a slow movement of the hands just to slowly creep this fly in at about a half to three quarters of an inch with every turn. Now this retrieve can be a little tricky to master at first, so a good alternative is the pinch strip, where we literally take our retrieve hand, touch it to a rod hand, never let it apart, and with my thumb and forefinger, I just reach, pull, and pinch, just like this. The same half to three quarters of an inch of retrieve. We're just slowly tracking this fly back towards us before we recast again. And then if fish are active or you're trying to induce a take, um, just another alternative is to add a long, slow strip. So just a slow strip like this, pause and let the fly sit. This raises the fly up and then it flutters and falls back down. And that rise fall motion often attracts a trout to take it. So always pay attention after incorporating a long, slow strip for signs of a take. So those are the primary retrieves or presentation techniques I use when fishing chironomid pupa or larva, regardless of the line type. The one constant is to remember, keep your retrieves slow. Remember, these bugs don't move fast. So I'm gonna make a change and I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about Coronamid patterns give you some guidelines to follow. With larval patterns, red is by far your most predominant color. You're also going to want to have some maroons, some olive, some greens, and don't be afraid to tie some with alternating bands of green and olive and red. Sizes, size 10 for the big ones, 12, 14, 16, and 18s. In your pupil patterns, you want to have a similar size range, 10 through 18s, tied on scud hooks, two extra long nymph hooks. Black is your most predominant coronamid color when it comes to pupa, so make sure that color is dominant in your fly box. But you wanna have browns, burnt orange, olive, greens, blues and purples for deep water, and when the emergence is on and those pupa are inflated and gassed up, they become quite bright and silvery. So have a selection of bright colored patterns featuring flashaboo body, silver flashaboo, anti-static bags, black holographic mylar to imitate those shiny inflated pupa that are ascending up through the water column to hatch. Let me go fish on, fish on. Outstanding. There we go. On the little blood worm. Not the biggest trout in the lake by any means, but proof, in con proof of concept into the net. So we're just gonna get him unbuttoned here. He ate a little tiny bloodworm, about a size 16, red body, copper bead. Whoa, really simple. He's gone, but there you have it. Coronamid fishing out of a pontoon boat is definitely possible, definitely advised. It's such a wonderful craft to fish coronamids out of because of its mobility and the ability to double anchor it with a little modification to your foot peg. The nice high seating position gives you that visibility you need, particularly when using floating lines, and you can fight fish in and around the boat. Just a wonderful craft. So hopefully some of the concepts and tips I've shown you on this tip will make you a little more confident the next time you head out on the water in your pontoon boat and the chironomids are hatching. For more information on the products used in today's video tip, and for other Outcast products, please visit us on the web at outcastboats.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram, and please follow our YouTube channel. Until next time, I hope to see you on the water.